Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. Well, I'm finally getting around to sighting this in. Um, I don't really got to do anything up and down because they're fixed sights. Uh, just right and left, I just shot three shots. Um, two of them are one on top of the other, and the other one's about an inch low. Uh, they're just a little bit under center, up and down. Can't do much with that, but it's an inch to the right, and I think if we give this a tap, we'll fix that. there it is. Now, you want to look at this, I'm sure. So, anyway, to ground the action, I still have a little bit of, uh, wiper, of uh, steel woolen to do, because some of the rust doesn't stop. And I let it go because when I did this one, I, I it's kind of modeled a little bit, and I wanted to do that to get kind of a... I don't like building an old style gun and making it look like it came, just came out of the factory. I like it to look like... I'm not trying to fool anybody or make someone think it's an original or anything, but I just want it to look like it's from the year that it was built, you know, and has been used and got honest wear on it. Anyway, stick around here, grab a cup of coffee, I'm going to shoot three more shots and see if I improved my uh, right and left a little. Okay. I didn't clean anything, it's going to be three more shots on top of three shot filed which it's for some reason already starting to be dirty right outside the chamber mouth the throat Get over here. Come here, Spoon. Teaspoon. Oh, yeah. Let's go take a look. Left correction is good. Um, the first three shots right here, this is two shots. That was uh, my second two shots, the first group of three. And this one right here to the left way over is uh, also part of that group. The next three are these stacked right here. Looks like two of them are pretty close, but they're dang near on the center line. Close enough for right now to be on the center line. So. I'm going to run in the shop and run a swap down there and I want to shoot, let's see that's six, I want to shoot four more and then I want to reload some, I've got some 500 grainers in there, uh, 530 grainers actually. Alright, try something else. Um, I'm going to shoot some more of these and then uh, somebody asked to see how to flesh a beaver and I don't do instructional videos, but I gotta go flesh that one beaver, so if you stay on here, you'll at least watch me do a little bit of fleshing. Uh, I have to get that done. Right now, I'm just having fun, trying to get this thing shooting right. It's bear season. That's going through that same hole that I've already punched in the target, so I 
I'd say we're right where we want to be. Okay, so I got to flush this, the last beaver. <laughs> um, I skinned this one out. You know, I don't mind, when I skin them, I skin them kind of quick. And I don't mind leaving big chunks of meat on there. It seems that for me it makes it easier to flush it, so I leave it on there. Anyway, I start on the sides because that usually has the most fat. And I just I like a I like this round. Um, it was just a four foot round that I cut, four or five foot round. I really like it for a beaver because it runs the shape of the beaver. And uh, the fat on the side seems to come off easy. But as you get towards the center, then it seems like you gotta really cut into it. Okay. And I keep all these scraps because it makes great bait. And beaver meat ain't that bad to eat. And uh, one thing I'd like you to remember while you're watching this, I don't do instructional videos. It's just something I'm doing that I figure somebody might be interested in. It's for the entertainment of it only. If you pick something up, that's great. I'm really happy. But just remember that I don't do instructional videos. This is reality TV here. Because when you catch a beaver, you're going to spend this time doing it. And that's the re oh, and I just put a hole in it. Okay, that's okay. It's close to the leg hole anyway. An old trapper told me one time when you if you make a mark, a hole next to the leg hole, and he said just make the leg hole bigger because they expect there to be a hole there. So getting a little windy and even though I'm almost done it's probably going to aggravate you a little bit the noise these like I said a lot of people would rather a lot of people would rather put these up on boards and I used to do that also but when I lived where there was a lot more beaver and I caught a lot more beaver uh, putting them on this metal thing they dry a lot faster uh, the other reason, putting them on a uh, put them on a board. Uh, that's a lot of plywood, but they do the you can get the they uh, you can get the, the diagram and uh, it has lines on it that you can stretch your beaver to different. was kind of the rage a while back. Now with the price of beaver being as low as it is, uh, I stretch them to suit what I'm going to do with them. And that's, I'm going to turn them into a, a hoop beaver that someone can put on their lodge or in their house or something like that. Now there's still a little tiny bit of meat on here and as it starts to dry, uh, it'll shave off a little easier, but you gotta be careful not to put a hole in it. Okay, so there we go. That'll tighten right up. See, this guy here had a had an injury right here below his eye, so I'll just sew that up. Like I say, these will come back from the tannery, and uh, and uh, I'll sew the leg holes up and I'll sew up the eyes. And for what I want to do with them, and I don't know, you know, I may make a, a garment out of them. I, I'd rather make a garment. A hat would be, beaver hats are, they're quite warm. And some of the weather we have around here, they come in handy. But keep putting these on 
until you have a straight I like to have a nice straight line all the way around and sometimes they'll come off because it's not tight but as it dries that'll tighten up anyway hey starting to rub this one was starting to rub just a little right there there you go so April is a little late here just a little some of the guard hairs are rubbed off but it'll still make a good garment okay guys um, it's starting to get windy so I'm gonna try to get this done I want to shoot three more shots at a hundred I shot three shots waiting for the batteries to charge sometimes <laughs> sometimes this filming really gets in the way of productivity because both batteries were dead so I started charging batteries this morning got one charge to come out here and then the battery on the microphone was dead and so I got three shots downrange on that shoots and target that's about a five inch circle and all of my shots are inside that black circle which is the best I've ever done at a hundred yards with this rifle these are not target sites they're hard to hold on there but I'm thinking I'm, I'm right on at 100. One of them was right next to the, the bullseye. So I'm going to shoot three more here with you guys. And then uh, we're going to start working on more distance. Now that I know that the rifle and the load is giving me four inches at uh, 100. And I'm sure the rifle will probably do a little better than that. First three shots were one, two, three, and that is about well, just a skosh over a four inch. Okay, and then this one here, and then there were two over here was the second group. And for some reason, they blew to the left. There was a little wind out there. Actually, there's quite a bit of wind out there. I wouldn't have thought it was enough to correct for. But uh, anyway, it's getting better. These, like I say, these are sights are not, I mean, you know how big that is at 100 yards with a blade sight? <laughs> so, um, and that may be as good as this rifle will shoot. At 100 yards, that's a dead deer. So we'll, uh, we'll keep messing with it, but I'm gonna start shooting this one a little further away, but I gotta figure out how to tighten that up a little, so. Stick with the channel and you'll get to stay with me as we do this. And uh, I think we got a good load. We just got to uh, shoot it some more. And that's what we're going to do. So anyway, you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the show. Bye-bye.